Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, let's talk about web development going awry, going backwards, headed in the wrong direction. I don't know if it is or not. It's just, uh, it, it, it seems to gather some decent conversation. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, really. Just from my own personal perspective, I'm, I'm like looking at some of the tools and I don't think that um, it's a matter of like bad programmers uh, or people that aren't smart or bad management or even bad decisions, really. I think we're just dealing with overcomplication and possibly bad tools and those tools being bad because of overcomplication when i created my codehawk website i did it in two months because i used a server-side code uh, stack that i liked which was nest.js it wasn't really tried or true i took a, a chance on it uh, but because i was like the only one making decisions i was able to build the architecture rather quickly right but in a programming environment like typically there's gonna be a lot of people involved there's gonna be a lot of uh, people above you below you there's a lot of just real life going on and software gets way way complex from there so we have things like agile methodology which is supposedly better than waterfall as if we didn't write software before we had uh, agile development right um so funny it's a, it's another tool where it's like oh we have all these like time checking things and we have these like arbitrary point systems that we d assign certain tasks and it's almost like you know that you have these people that are like no if you if you if we did waterfall like we'd never be able to do the same thing or and i'm not a proponent for waterfall or even agile i, I could honestly give a shit um i just want the software to work and have a good environment where we're actually making progress and we can deliver what the business is looking for that's like the most important thing to me now you're gonna have people that are like test driven development test driven development uh, you have to write all your logic first and tests and Everybody that's out there says that you're doing Agile wrong. Like, that's like the one, that's the only tried and true thing I've ever seen when it comes to Agile is that there's always somebody else that says that you're not doing Agile the right way. And they'll say the same thing about programming or unit tests or this or that. Like there's a lot of arrogant people in this field. And I try not to be one of them, honestly. I try not, I know it comes off sometimes that I, I act like it. I know I don't know what's up. You know what I mean? I, I, I've been doing this long enough to know I don't know what's up. And I don't have the answers to all these problems that we have. But what I find is that these tools, I don't think are making our lives all that much better. There were websites that were impressive that did a lot of stuff before React, like YouTube, for instance. Uh, did they have to use React to create that? When Google Maps came out, they destroyed MapQuest because you could actually like scroll in and out. And how could you do that on the map where you would have to click a little plus button and stuff like that on MapQuest, but Google, they tapped into the power of JavaScript, wrote it all custom, and created one of the best apps, even to this day, that I've ever seen when that came out. And that was over a decade ago now. So the tools that we have now, it's not like you need them in order to build something that's awesome. Now, these tools can make our lives easier. React certainly does make complicated user interfaces a little easier. It makes it easier to hire talent because everybody knows how to do it the React way. TypeScript will solve some type safe bugs, but it doesn't make your code more readable. It doesn't make it like run faster. It doesn't make your build times any faster. It actually slows all that stuff down. It makes it much more of a pain in the ass, really, um, coming from a strictly JavaScript background. But I've been doing TypeScript now probably five years or so, so I do like it. I understand the value that it brings. But and in fact, I even use it on CodeHawk. But I, I don't know that like, you know, it doesn't do a damn thing for CodeHawk as far as like what it could have been if I just wrote it in JavaScript or jQuery, my own custom library, somebody else's libraries. Like we, we have, it's all just programming. It's ones and zeros. It's logic. The hiccups and um, the hiccups along the way are really, uh, it's about overcomplication. I mean, Donald Newth, one of the famous um, game theory programmers out there, I mean, he once he has a famous quote that's uh, premature optimization is the root of all evil. I could not agree with that m anymore. Like we tap into some tools that are out there because somebody wrote a blog or you got Dan Abramoff talking about it or something like that. And then we're like, OK, well, if he uses it, we're, we're going to use that. And Google did this. Google did the open office. So we're going to do the open office here, even though everybody hates each other and we don't even have any collaboration to begin with. A couple of PhDs that didn't have to work with hundreds of developers at the same time writing an unclear project, like with unclear directions and all that. They decided, oh, yeah, let's do extreme programming and then we're going to build Agile from it and let's do scrum teams like we're, we're playing uh, rugby or something. 
Look, I'm not trying to say I have the answers. I don't. I am the first to admit I don't have the answers. I'm not even trying to bash on programming or bash on the tools, really. All I'm simply saying is like, everywhere I look, I see overcomplication. I see shit that just gets in the way of what it is that we're trying to do. I see things like Reddit's new website, which is like a spa, you know, it's like, and it sucks. Like their, their new website is awful. Even though they're old UI and stuff, it was all like uh, route based and it just used, it was like a typical monolith, but at least it worked, you know? Hacker News, like uh, indeed.com, Cra Craigslist, you know, like th those websites, Wikipedia, like they, they aren't doing spa and all that stuff and they massively scale and they work. And I bet you they're easy as shit to work on. Instead, we got companies like Capital One, who I almost worked for at one point. They're, um, I guess they're, they're headquartered in Virginia, but anyway, I almost worked for them at one point. You know, I think that, that, you know, some of the people that I interviewed with over there, I mean, they definitely thought they were hot shit. I look at their apps. I actually use them for business banking. And if I was not so lazy, I, I wouldn't use them. But um, I've just I, I've used them for years. And, and you know, unfortunately, it was a, dis a mistake that I made a long time ago. But their product is awful. Like, I mean, they once sent me a letter because I had like um, like a credit or something. It was like, oh, you, you used like a credit card or this or that or something. It was like one of those credit card things you use, uh, you accrue some sort of balance, you get a reward payment. And I swear to God, this thing was like five cents. They sent me a check for five cents with this like cover letter of like, you've earned this. Don't spend it all in one place and all this stuff. It's like, dude, you got to have a little bit more thought about some of these processes. Like there should be a threshold, right? If somebody is given less than $10 hell in this economy, economy with this inflation, probably should be a 20, maybe a hundred dollar threshold. Who knows? But like, don't send something stupid like that. It makes you look bad. Another thing too, is like, I was going to buy a Porsche. Thank God I didn't. It's like some 40 year old thing I'm going through, I think, but I didn't do it and I'm not going to do it. Um, and I'm glad I didn't. But the point being is that like, I got approved through Capital One, who is, like I said, I do bank banking with them. They have this auto navigator, right? And it's like a single page app and it barely works on desktop. It doesn't work at all on mobile. You start filtering a few things. Like as soon as you start filtering a few, a few things, like you literally have to clear your cookies, shut the website down. It's using like probably local storage. Um, I didn't inspect it all that much, but the point being is like, it's single page app, it's spa, it's probably an overcomplicated nightmare to work on, I would imagine. And the end result is that it's absolute garbage. It's an unusable product. So yeah, these tools can make our lives easier, but it, I think it goes beyond that. It, it, like we need to not overcomplicate our lives. If you don't need something, don't use it. Start with why. Learn to say no to certain requirements. Learn to push back against project managers who ask you to do something stupid. Until we do that, like none of all the best tools in the world aren't going to make this job any easier. So whether it's uh, Dan Abramoff writing them or not, if you're learning the code, I recommend you check out my website, codehawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.